evening dear Ambazonians, good evening comrades on ground zero and ground one. My name is Ernest. I have never made a video, neither an audio since the struggle started because I have been monitoring everything on the ground and uh, you all know that most of all what has been happening I was usually on the forefront and I have a lot of those information in hand. But my reason trying to do this first video is to debunk all the lies that Kapo Daniel has been telling. Kapo is very dangerous, very malicious, very poisonous to this struggle, such that he has extended it and has deliberately decided to destroy some people. I don't know why. But again, let me just go straight to the point. The first time Kapo Daniel came to Nigeria, he came because of a lady. I was the one that arranged everything. What do I mean by arrange? Kapo Daniel has been meeting with this girl, he met this Nigerian girl on Facebook and they have been chatting and discussing things right up to marital level. Well, I feel bad that is some sort of going to his personal this thing, but you can't explain this thing without saying these things the way they are. Good. So, while they were talking, now Kapona called me and then told me that he would like me to meet the girl one of one and assess the girl for him. He sent the girl's number, the girl's name is Goodness, and then I called the girl. One Sunday evening when I met the girl, snapped some pictures together with the girl and sent to him. And he asked me to rate the girl over 10 and I said the girl was 7 over 10. Immediately arrangements were being made for him to come down. And he came down, the girl went to Lagos with the mother, the mother came right from the east. They went to Lagos, received Kapo, and then later on then Kapo, they came to Abuja where we spent the rest of the time. It so happened that this was just the same week that Nalo was released. So he asked some few questions about Nalo and blah 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 that we were discussing. And you know, deal then Nalo has never revealed. As I'm talking to you now, there are some things Nalo has never revealed to me. He has an extent of what he tells she tells me. So we discussed and we decided that I took personally took uh, Kapo to go and show him Nera Hotel and did some filming. I was the one that personally filmed him of some of these things in that day's thing. Later on, we met an informant. We contacted an informant that we now decided to go and interview that guy in one hotel. And after interviewing the guy, well, I believe till date, I told Kapu to send me an audio recording of that interview because the guy said a lot of things that he, Kapu, was protecting because of his own interest. Well, I don't know. He refused. If uh, Mr. Chris Han, Christopher Hans, I think that our white brother, the white Ambazonian in Germany, remember, I complained to him that we did some investigation and Kapo refused to reveal them out the way they were and has refused to give me a copy. But that notwithstanding, you know, I let it. Then while the sister of this said girl that she came, he came to meet, he had a sister by name Ifi. In Nigeria, they have a system where you graduate in the university, you do what they call one year compulsory service, they call it youth service. And those, they, those who do that service, they call them copper. So, in one of her outing one evening, goodness came with this her sister, Ifi, who was doing her youth service with the Nigerian Navy. So, while we were discussing in that restaurant in Use, the girl now were like, ah, is there war in Cameroon? They didn't even know. Both the girl, the goodness, and Ifi didn't know what was happening in Cameroon. No. But, but when Kapoke went back to Hong Kong, he now was saying that he met a girl that was a lawyer, a Navy lawyer. I didn't re react to that statement Kapoke made because I knew it was propaganda. And propaganda, then we needed it. We needed a lot of propaganda which was helping us. So I couldn't come out to begin to debunk things that he said which were not true. A lot of those things. That was how his first visit now came to an end and he went and he made whatever things were doing. But while here, he still showed that strong anger, strong hatred. He, this hatred for Naloa with passion. I realized it, but I kept playing with me because he, I'm a very intelligent person. And when it comes to information management, I don't think I can beat my chest that I'm among those who can manage information in this struggle. So that was how his first coming here and uh, when he went, he was doing all those things, presenting videos and telling all types of lies. I knew the truth. But what I wanted Ambazonians to know is that 
nobody should think that this guy had so much interest in this struggle so that he would use his money and come to Nigeria to do any investigation. No, it was just like you use one stone to shoot two birds, which is okay. Which is okay. I'm not against that. But he shouldn't make people understand that he packed his bags from Asia and came to Nigeria to do any investigation. That is a lie. He came to meet a girl by name Goodness. I still have the contact of the girl and you know the sister Ify, they are all on ground. So thanks and thanks and I will continue with part two of his second coming to Nigeria. Thank you very much. Dear Ambazonians, I'm coming now on part two of this audio. Part two concerns the second coming of uh, uh, Capo Daniel, which now might take me a little bit of time, a little bit of explanation, but I will try to be brief as possible. The second coming, Capo Daniel never came to Nigeria the second time because of any investigation. No. The reason why Capo Daniel came to Nigeria was to get married. Capo Daniel had contacted me and told me that the girl, the goodness that you people heard me spoke of the first time, the parents, the sisters have rejected the girl because going on f uh, Facebook, they discover that the girl has been living a funny lifestyle, a wayward lifestyle, and his parents refused that. That cannot take place. His sister rejected. So he decided not to go back to his old time girlfriend who was once with him in Hong Kong, and it seemed the girl was deported and she couldn't come back to Hong Kong. Now, after the goodness, the, 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 the issues with goodness failed, he had to go back to that old time relationship, and then now uh, they agreed and scheduled to get married. Kapo contacted me and told me to register the marriage in Nigeria since he can't go to get married in Cameroon because of the crisis. Amazonia, as you can see, I went to the marriage register, AMAC, Abuja Municipal Area Council. I hope you saw where. If you see the name there, you will see Emmanuel Ngong, Ndong. That is Kapo's name. And you see uh, uh, Olga, Lilia, and the rest. That is the lady's name. I went and registered the marriage in Amak, they paid the fee, and the date for the wedding was scheduled on the 13th of, uh, 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 that is the 13th of um, August. You can see the date. I, I, you see it very well. Now, Capona didn't make any arrangement. You can see, that is Capo's international passport. So that's one of the documents they were asked to use to register the marriage. That is Capo. You can see, he sent all this for the marriage. That is for the said lady. Or Galilea. I want Amazonians to know so that they should stop lying that he came to do any investigation. You can see. You know, Capo formerly was a divorcee because when I went to register the marriage, they said they should bring these documents I'm presenting. And I told him, you know, that if he had divorced before, and that is his divorce certificate, that he divorced before. You know, he had earlier married to a lady from Hong Kong and they had two beautiful sons. That is it. I just want you people to get this evidence to know why he came. I'm not doing it for, a, it for any reason, but see some of them want to come out and say things. And the lady too happened, was said to have been married in uh, uh, Benin and uh, the husband died. So the equally asked for death certificate and all those stuff. Those are the documents that have shown you people Ambazonians. I hope you've seen Those are the documents and the marriage register. So when Kapo came to Nigeria, finally arrived in Nigeria for the wedding, complications started. The parents of the lady, the mother, insisted that they cannot come to Nigeria for the marriage. That Kapo should come to Cameroon and do the marriage. And Kapo refused that he's an activist and with the situation he had, he can't go to Cameroon. The father of the said lady now, I think he's presently, he, he's in France. The man now then insisted that Kapo and the lady should come in France, they should do the wedding in France. Kapo should equally make it known to the dad, neither can he equally go to France. That was where things now came. Stand at uh, the, the, the thing became at this very funny, delicate situation where nothing was moving again. Discussions, calls upon them, and I was there present in everything. Now, within this time, the 13 has already passed because of this deliberation. I now had to go and reschedule the wedding for the 27th of August. Pending that, between this time, the two families would have the two families, Kapo and the lady, would have risen by the 27th nothing was moving the mother of the girl insisted that wedding cannot take place but the only thing they can do they will allow the girl to come and visit him 
while he was still in Nigeria and they discussed but the wedding would not take place. Of which the lady came, that 27 day two has died down. The lady came, we went and picked the lady when she arrived Abuja. When the lady arrived uh, at Calabar, it was Mr. Ander Frederick, who is uh, a part of the consortium, who picked him, sent him to us, uh, sent her to us in Abuja. That night, Kapo Daniel, myself and uh, Barrister Nukuna went and picked the girl and lodged them in their hotel. We stayed here for some days and then through discussion, through discussion, nothing happened. So Kapo now then told me that, well, as it is like this, the marriage cannot take place, that they will have agreed that they will iron things now and that they will be coming this month that we are into, this uh, uh, October that we are into, to do the marriage. So <laughs> I don't know how that is going to be feasible. I've shown you the document evident and I've shown you everything. Uh, what I want us to do now is this second part of it I want you to listen and listen keenly this is where my interest is it might equally interest you one Amazonians should tell ask Kapo to tell them who is the father of the girl that he wants to marry the father of Olga who is the mother of Olga who is Olga where do they come from by the time they answer this question I think some of you will be very he has never seen. The mother of the girl, the girl is from Yaoundé, and the girl was born in Yaoundé. The father of the Olga is a general in the Democratic Repo uh, Republic of Congo's army. He's a general. I hope you people are hearing. These are the same people that I say we are fighting with them. I will really put that, the noise is making, we should start suspecting Kapo because I believe Kapo might be working for the general who we should be working for La Republic because all those who met the lady here, in short, if you meet everybody here, you can contact me behind, I will give you names of people that they met here and you call. This lady is against the struggle 1000%. In short, to this lady, he will say it, he doesn't hide it anyway, that La Republic is the best place on earth to live on. That is the place we don't want. That is the place his husband doesn't, doesn't want. The mother is against the struggle killed for us round. The army general is not for the struggle. Kapo should come out. Kapo wants to prove to Amazonia that he is straightforward. He should tell us who is the father of the girl and what is his profession. He should tell us who is the mother of the girl and what is her profession. That is the point I want to make. Because from the day I realized that he is dealing with a family that has much to do with the La Republic, that has much to do in military, uh, you know, they're gone. I became very, very suspicious till this hour. But I had to stay me behind because most of these things were like personal. If I'm saying these things now, it's because he's pushing things to the world and let us set the records right. To know who is pretending to champion the struggle. Meanwhile, on the ground, his hands are like, <laughs> we should check them. That is why I'm giving you this. This thing. So, from this uh, 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 presentation, while he was here with us in Abuja, we went out one evening, and that was the evening that Milan brought out his presentation. After Milan's presentation, Naloa was boiling. Naloa contacted me and told me that, in short, he can't, she can't take this thing again. She wants to talk. She told me that I should contact Eric Tato, that he want to talk with Eric Tato, that is, he want to talk to Amazonians through Eric Tato, an interview with Eric Tato. I have not been communicating with Eric Tato. I don't have the Eric Tato's uh, 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 contact, neither do, do Eric Tato have mine. So I told Naroa there and there that, okay, another activist is presently with me here in Abuja and it's Kapo Daniel. Can I talk? Can I? Talk to can I allow Kapo Daniel to do the talking since with him? Uh, Naloa was skeptical, skeptical that he doesn't like Kapo because Kapo he will say one thing and he will say one million things. And I turned to Kapo Daniel and proposed to him that Naloa wants to talk. Now Naloa say any, that he wants an activist to interview her and ask questions and she will answer the question. Uh, and Kapo was very excited that for the fact that I decided that he should do it. Naloa accepted. So. Naloa said Kapo should ask whatever questions. Kapo prepared questions. So we were to meet the next day for the answering of the question. 
while we met that day for preparing she also the question because all this was happening dr success and Kongo was there on coming that day dr success and Kongo prepared his own questions so when we came now and i was taking the questions from capo daniel dr success wanted to give his own questions to capo refused he stopped Dr. Success from giving questions that no, he would not want Dr. Success to give any questions and blah blah Dr. Success is alive and if he's honest to himself, he will that his own questions that he brought, Kapo rejected them. So when we took the question, I sent the question to Naloa. Naloa even sent some other question to give to Kapo to ask her. That Kapo should ask her those questions. That should tell you how much she wanted to talk. That same day, that same night, when we were to do the interview the next day, Naloa received some calls and they pleaded to her that she should not talk out of anger she should not talk she has been quiet for months she should still be quiet and manage everything so nalo told me to tell success so when i told dr uh, uh kapo kapo was very bitter kapo was very annoyed from that day say whether nalo likes it or he doesn't like it nalo must talk that she would do everything he kapo daniel would do everything including sabotage to make sure that nalo talk i told her that but this lady on her own decided to talk and if he has received instructions for some quarters not to talk i think you can equally bear with her so nalowanet gave it an option that i should take the uh, uh, kapo to the lawyer lawyer abdul that you all know and the lawyer will answer those questions that they've stopped her from questioning but nalowa gave me a warning for me to take doctor for me to take kapo to the barrister i should make sure that there is a third party because he doesn't trust Kapo. So I gave some names to Naloa. Can I go with this person, with this person, with this? So when I finally called Barrister Nuku Nazemkwe, Naloa said, yes, good, I can go with Barrister. I immediately called Barrister. We shared it. We called Barrister Abdul. Then we met in Barrister Abdul's office. And these questions were asked. He answered most of the questions. Then to some, he withdrew. Some, he was very technical. So in course of that discussion, a name was mentioned, Tatasen, the Barrister played an ignorant role. The barrister told us in our presence that Naloa was released on bail with Dr. Ogong and that they have been reporting to the police each time they called them. So, after the interview has finished and everything closed, I remember the barrister now then told us that he didn't want to make this particular comment he's making now in the video. The barrister then told us that if truly that name they mentioned, Tatasen, Naloa knew any Tatasen and was meeting with any Tatasen, then that should be very dangerous so we then now concluded that when we went back i remember uh, uh, there are some other personalities i met because yeah i've met a lot of people we met a lot of people bangala and all the rest dr kibbe we've met personality i still have some of the letters with me and everything so uh, uh Kapo keep insisting that I should try to link him with some of those people and with some of those politicians. I said, I was playing my withdrawing, being very skeptical because I know who Kapo He thought he was smart. Now, uh, when he went and presented his video, the first thing I think, if all of you remember that video, he said, Naloa had no issues with the Nigerian police. And I now contacted him and we started it. I said, no, but Kapo, most of these things you are presenting now to the world, they are not true. This is not what happened. He told me, that he will do everything, including lies, to force Naloa to talk. And I told her that now, but that is not fair. It cannot be, in short, things should not be done that way. Let this girl, this girl has said he can't talk and he has given reason. If you look at this, are most of the charts that we had. He told me, if you look at this chart, he told me, and I forwarded all the charts to Naloa. I forwarded everything. He said he will do everything, including lies, to make sure that naloa talk mm? you can see the discussion you see i did this is the discussion with uh, 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 dr success he t with uh, this thing he say uh, uh, to naloa she owes the people her story unless they can you get it see she would do everything he would do everything including lies mm? so when i then stopped him i said no but that is not favor that's being callous that's being malicious that's being evil in short you have you are more than a poison he then told me that uh his father after his presentation was arrested by the gendarmes he then accused me whether is he not sure that i'm the one that arranged for the arrest of the father that's to tell you the type of person he is the moment you differ with him he can say he can say anything just because i differed with him he said uh, I organized the arrest of uh, the father. So, 
this is just some of those few things that I wanted us to know and I've never decided to make this audio because I was silent on other things that you know we should be doing other things that will help the struggle rather than telling lies in this process now Nalo one them called me and told me that I should ask Dr. Success where did he get that story about Dickie Mas that he was going out with one tatasin. I called Dr. Success and asked if Dr. Success told me that he know he got the story from one audio from uh, Dickie Mas. Then he then said I should ask that that I should tell Capo to ask him to. When I told Capo to ask uh, Dr. Success, Capo now in less than 10 minutes contacted Dr. Success and Capo now gave me the same answer that Success has given to me. Capo told me that Dr. Success has told him the same thing that it was from Dickie Mas. I remember that each time we were sitting, Capo was always communicating with Dickie Mas. Then Naloda then told me to tell Capo that, okay, ask Dickie Mas, where did he get that story? I then told Dr. I then told uh, uh, Capo, ask Dickie Mas, where did he ever get that story? Because Nalo did refuse that he has never known any Tatasan, he has never ever seen any Tatasan, that Dr. Success was even in the food conclave and knew everything and has never seen any Tatasan. He was supposed to be the first person to come out to debunk any as I was saying, uh, uh, Nalova contacted me to ask Dr. Success, to ask, to tell uh, Kapo to ask Success where he got that story that he was dating one Tatasan and this thing. So, when I contacted Dr. Success, Dr. Success said no. He only got that audio or the message from Diggy Mas. Then now, I told Nalova, and Nalova said, okay, I should tell Kapo to ask him the same question. I told Kapo, Kapo asked Dr. Success. In less than 10 minutes, Kapo got back to me and told me that Dr. Success has told him the same thing. Dr. Success has told him that he got a story from one Diggy Mas. Then Nalova then told me that, okay, I should ask Kapo to ask Diggy Mas because I told Nalova that on many occasions when I was sitting with Dr. with Kapo Daniel, he was discussing and chatting with the said Diggy Mas. So I don't have the contact. He said they should ask the same him. So when I asked Dr. Uh, uh, Kapo to ask the Tiki Mas, about a day after, I reminded him now, but you have not given me the response from the question we asked you. He told me that, you know, you don't have to take it too harsh on Tiki Mas, you have to take it slowly. And then I asked him, why is it that when I told you to ask the same question to success, you did it in less than 10 minutes? Why would it not take days for you to ask the same question? To Diggy Mas, are you covering something? As I'm telling you till now, this second, this over getting to two months, he has never given me a response to tell us where Diggy Mas got the story. But what baffled us is that when the story came out that there was a Diggy Mas at the foot conclave, Kapo was at the foot conclave. Kapo is even the first person to have come out to debunk that story because he was in the foot conclave and there was no person in the name of, uh, 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 how do they call it again? Mm. Uh, uh, Tatasan, such a Tatasan was never mentioned. So this is how some of us has turned this struggle to a ground where we use it to fight our enemies, to tell lies, to like go deception, to do everything. Personally, I equally condemn in all terms what Kapo has been doing to this struggle. I know where he belongs and I've always told him but I don't hide my feelings. I don't hide anything. If you look in this struggle, I think one of the best group of people that you can imitate them in this struggle should be me and Dr. Success. I fight with Dr. Success on every daily basis. We have never agreed on any issues, but we remain the best of friends. Anytime I have a problem, if he hears it, he will be the first person to contact me, console me to ask how far and this is his thing. That is how we should be. We should not be doing as if we are enemies to the people. But Ambazonians, I will end this my small submission. I might come back to answer any other questions you want me to answer. Because I know a lot of people will have questions to answer. Why? The simple reason why. I was very close to the president, to Pangala. We were working together with Naloa and everything.